I'm Jay Kingley, co-founder and CEO of Maven, your host of Fractionals Unplugged. Today, I'm joined by Henning Schwinam, the co-founder and managing partner of Vendux. Vendux helps place fractional interim or contract sales executives with the right clients. Vendux started four and a half years ago, and they have over 700 sales professionals registered with them. Henning is based in St. Louis Obispo, California. Welcome, Henning. Thank you, Jay. Uh, this is one of the best days in my life, and I'm <laughs> really glad to be here. And for the record, I did not coach him or threaten him to say that. Welcome to Fractionals Unplugged, an insider's perspective vodcast and podcast from Maven. You've left the corporate executive world to build your own business to secure your income, savor your independence, and succeed on your terms. But you have to get past the struggles of acquiring clients, building a pipeline, and getting paid what you're worth. In this podcast, Jay Kingley, the CEO of Maven, and his guests share their best practices, tips, and tricks on how you can get out of Struggle City and into Success City and beyond. Enjoy today's episode. Henning, mean, let's say I've had a 25-year career as a sales professional and executive. My last three years, serving as director of sales for a $250 million business services company. I left corporate a year ago to become a fractional sales executive. I meet you at a business networking event, and I want to understand what Vendux can do for me. You've got a maximum of 60 seconds if I'm going to walk away and go to the, get myself some food. So go and give me your elevator pitch. We are a sales channel for you. If you're a fractional executive and you're like 90 plus percent of those executives, you either experience a feast or famine cycle in your assignments or you experience a drought over a longer period of time because it takes a while to build a pipeline. We are one additional sales channel to all the other efforts you're undertaking to find assignments. So what motivated you to create Vendux to help place these fractional interim sales executives with the right clients? My own experience. I was done with my corporate sales leadership career about four years ago. And at that point, wanted to be a fractional VP of sales. And uh, when I went out there, I quickly discovered that I just was not well connected enough. I didn't know enough owners, founders, CEOs board members, investors, all these people who would make a decision about engaging a fractional executive. And then I looked for an agent or a matchmaker who could help me find those. And I could not identify one with focus on sales and sales leadership. There were those out there who focused on the entire C-suite, but none focused on the sales leadership role. And that prompted me to pivot and say, what I must be missing, others must be missing too. And so uh, I went out, did a few phone calls, and very quickly validated that that was indeed the case, and that prompted me to start Vendux. Now, I remember years ago, as a, an entrepreneur, I ran into a very accomplished uh, venture capitalist, and, and I asked, you know, what's your advice on how do you start a business? And he looked at me and said, Find a pain that you have, solve it for you. You aren't that unique. If you have the pain, lots of people will have the pain. And that is how you create a great business. And there you go. And with 700 people, I would say you are well on your way. Now, you. you've got a, actually quite a different approach as to how you uh, do your business, how you think about your business. And I'm always fascinated when it comes to marketplaces, because marketplaces have to balance the clients needing sales help with the fractional interim sales executives looking for clients. So how do you do that balance? Well, we have, in, in effect, three different processes that we're following, and they are, you, you could argue, disconnected, though you'll understand quickly how they are connected. So first of all, we onboard executives. That's disconnected from a particular opportunity, 
but we go through an onboarding process where we establish an executive's a history, their, the different sales scenarios that they mentioned, their superpowers. And that creates a profile in our database. And our commitment to an executive is at that point is your profile is now part of every match that we're running. The second piece of the process is client-centric because clients don't come to us and say, Henning, I need a fractional CRO for, for uh, two days a week for six months. They come and say, I have a problem. I have a problem in sales. Can you help? And so we scope a, f- a solution involving a fractional executive around their problem, uh, go really deep, and then our commitment to them is, we will find you the executive that checks all the boxes that uh, we just defined. And that's then the third piece of that process is the matching involving a software that we build ourselves um, because nothing on the shelf I felt was good enough for that particular purpose of identifying a really small slate, one, two, maybe three executives that check all these very detailed boxes. And that's how we bring the two together. And that's how these three different processes are connected. But we are very, very much client centric in how we operate. Our goal is not to fill every executive's calendar to the max. Our goal is to always find the right executive for the client. I think that approach is brilliant. Um, This is the point about a sales executive. The great salespeople understand that their job is to help their client get the solution, get the outcome that they need. And often it could be that what it is they're selling will do it, but not always. And that never stops them. And I think being client centric is actually the way that you add the most value to the fractional and interim sales executives that are registered with you. So I Love that alignment. I love that perspective, which brings me to the point of the large number of marketplaces that are out there that fractional sales executives can join. And and in the sales space, there are even franchises they can buy, you know, the Mm -hmm. entire business in a box uh, to launch their business. And it seems like because the fractional space is exploding. So there are these new what I'll call marketplaces popping up every day. So what makes Vendux different from everything else that's out there? Well, first of all, we're, we're still the only marketplace with a sole focus on sales. Um, most everyone else focuses on the entire C-suite. Um, and then we are very specific about the value that we provide to an executive. We are their sales channel. We provide them assignment opportunities. Um, and a lot of the other firms, marketplaces out there don't necessarily do that. Um, there are marketplaces, and I wouldn't necessarily call them marketplaces. There are more like uh, brands that are out there that provide executives with a framework, a marketing uh, strategy with tools to use. There are those communities out there, communities of fraction executives. There are mm-hmm. training resources for fractional executives, um, but th- all of those do not focus on the matchmaking, on bringing assignment opportunities to executives. So the, the two areas where we're unique is sole focus on sales and the fact that we are a, an opportunity provider, assignment opportunity provider to fractional executives. What's your perspective on the biggest challenges? facing fractional sales executives today? Well, I think it is um, filling their calendar with assignments. In my observation, um, 80, probably more like 90% of all fractional executives struggle to create the kind of utilization that they desire. It may not always be 40, 50 hours a week. Some have lower goals, but it is a struggle to fill them. And it could be the result of inconsistent business development activities, creating feast and famine cycles. It could be that they're new to the game. It could be 
And I've seen this, and it's interesting if you talk about sales. I've seen these executives who've led sales teams for 30 years, but they're really bad at selling themselves um, and their their value. So there are a lot of challenges out there that um, that all are around, you know, creating creating an even workload and creating the level of income and the level of workload that you're looking for. Well, that is the raison d'etre of Maven, you know, to on a on a one to one basis for those uh, fractional executives who are top twenty percent performers to really help them build the business. Because if you think about it, in their corporate careers, they have never had to sell themselves; they're always selling someone else. And here's the other interesting thing: is what they are selling is someone else's intellectual property, bound up in a service, a product doesn't matter; it's not theirs. It's someone else's and they are expert at how to do that. Now mm-hmm. they want to set up on their own. They have to not just sell themselves. They have to sell their IP. And most of them have never thought of that before. Right. Now, I think you're actually an interesting way to bridge it with your matchmaking service. Uh, and, and that is a solution among, I would say, a range that, uh, that I think a, a, a top fractional executive should take advantage of and to your to your point of them not selling having used to being to, to sell themselves i talked to hundreds of sales leaders every year and talk about their careers and you know one of the interesting topics is always how did you move from one company to the next from one job to the next and more often than not it's you know a headhunter call or my former boss went to this company, and so he called me and brought me in. And all of those scenarios are not scenarios where they have to sell themselves. Um, and the other aspect, and you mentioned that about selling yourself, is to identify your value proposition. What is unique about you? What's your superpower? And after a career of 30 years, to say, I've done everything, and I have skills that travel well, and I can work in any industry, that's not going to get anybody interested because every client comes out of out of a very unique scenario and a very what they consider a unique niche, whether it's a product or an industry or uh, their life stage that they're in, um, and they're looking for someone who can say, "I've done this before." And so you have to identify as an executive what is that this that you can help with, and and therein is the challenge. So given, given the challenges that you've identified, what advice would you give to these fractional sales executives? Well, to address the challenge of uneven workload and underutilization, a multi-channel strategy. I think to mm-hmm. put your eggs in one basket, to maybe lean back uh, and say, I have a strong network and people will call me. I don't need to do anything else or I joined this group and now I have a strong brand behind me. I don't think that those single strategies in most sales scenarios, multi-channel is the way to success. Um, And so you have to pursue that. Um, And then the second piece would be what we just mentioned, identify your superpower and be be as specific as you can be about it. Um, To say you're, you're a SaaS CRO, puts you in the same bucket with thousands of others. If you say I'm a SaaS fintech CRO, five to 50 million, that's a little more unique. So the more unique you can be, the greater I believe your chances are of finding assignments. Well, speaking of uh, omni-channel, multi-channel, which I think is, is advice that is right on point, I'm that fractional sales executive I find Vendux incredibly compelling to add to my channels. What's it going to cost me? Nothing. We uh, don't operate on the model of uh, pay to play. Uh, We ask for 60 or 90 minutes of your time for a really in-depth onboarding conversation that provides us the data that we need and the details that we need to match you into the right opportunities. But that doesn't cost anything. We work on the basis of putting ourselves in the same boat as the executive and the client, which simply means all three of us 
have a vested interest that an assignment lasts a really long time and is successful. And that means that we take a percentage of the fee that the client pays over the time that the uh, the assignment lasts. And uh, that also means if the assignment ends after three months, we typically don't have our investment recouped at that point. So we are interested in making sure that we bring the right person and together with the right company and that, that this works uh, successful. Well, that certainly, I think, aligns all three key parties, but I want to still be a little skeptical. And so let me ask this question. Do I have to be exclusive to Vendux? Do I have to run everything through your marketplace? No. Um, and I specifically use the phrase that we're in a non-exclusive relationship um, because you don't have to take anything that we bring to you, nor do we commit and say, we're going to bring you this much work every year, or it's going to take only this many weeks until you get the first assignment. Um, we can't possibly make that commitment because um, we don't know what opportunities will come to us tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. We don't know that. So we don't make those commitments. We're non-exclusive. And when we reach out to an executive and say, you know, we have an opportunity, the first questions are, are you interested and are you available? And only if you are, will we take this further and make an introduction to the client. So it's, uh, it's non-exclusive. And actually, we promote the idea of a multi, multi-channel multi strategy. We provide the, the connections to other marketplaces directly on our website because we don't want to be the sole provider of assignments to any executive since we operate client focus. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to learn a bit more about Henning. You've spent the last 25 or more years working your way up the corporate ladder, achieving success and reward along the way. Whether corporate kicked you to the curb or you walked out the door of your own volition, there is no going back. You're nowhere close to retiring, so you're moving on to your second act as a fractional executive. You're feeling the thrill of freedom mixed with the dread of the unknown. You're not alone. Maven works with the elite 20%, turning the top fractional executives' aspirations into reality easily and quickly. Imagine the right clients needing your genius, chasing you to get it, and happy to pay you for the impact you make. Maven helps you build all aspects of your business to fund your lifestyle without having to work corporate hours. With Maven, market yourself easily, select your clients with purpose, and build a business that leverages your genius, on your terms, not on someone else's. Reach out to Jay at j.kingley at referabilitymaven.com. Transform your expertise into a prosperous business where you'll make the impact you want with all the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned. Welcome back. We're talking to Henny Schwinem, the co-founder and managing partner of Vendux. Vendux helps clients find the right fractional interim or contract sales executives to solve their needs. Henny. Let's find out a bit more about you. Let's start with, what's been your biggest professional accomplishment? It's always difficult to label something the biggest uh, or best or brightest um, because at different stages of a career, the the hills to to climb, the hills to conquer are are different, have different shapes and sizes. Um, um, I I would say that um, building a business that eventually got sold to a uh, VC uh, or got sold through a VC to uh, to an acquiring company um, heading their global sales and marketing was probably at this point my biggest achievement. But that also means I'm still working on the one that I'm in right now. And hopefully that one will top what I've uh, done before. Perspective is a wonderful thing, as you were alluding to. So now I'm, I'm going to go on the other side. We're going to go dark for a moment. I want to know what's your biggest professional failure. But here's the thing, Henning, and I know that because we're not 25 anymore, which is it's only a failure if you don't learn from it and if it doesn't shape what you do afterwards. So, yeah, you know, we all like to look at train wrecks. So let, let's talk about the failure. But more importantly, 
I want to know, what did you learn from it? And how did it ultimately flow on and influence what you do today? As I outlined in the first part of this, uh, of our session here, I, I now in what you could label recruiting because matchmaking is nothing but recruiting. If I go back to the about 25 years that I led sales teams, I lost count about how many salespeople and sales managers I hired. Um, I'm happy to say that more than 50% of them worked out, uh, but there was also a large percentage that did not. And every single one is a failure because it's a huge investment, as, as you know, and um, it takes, it, it puts a business back years when you bring in the wrong person. And so I made my fair share of mistakes. I believe I learned from each one, but each one was different. And so you, you can, I could, couldn't say, you know, I did one wrong hire and going forward, every other, every other one was a perfect match. That is not, was not the case. But, but I have learned, um, and that's what I'm applying here at Vendux, that you really want to stay away from this choice of selecting the best from a group but rather go for the one that checks all the boxes. So without even looking at candidates, create the list of requirements they have to meet. And if they meet all of them, that's good. If they fail to meet, they disqualify because no matter how much you like them, they fail to meet the requirements you establish up front. And in most hiring processes that take a longer period of time, that's exactly what's happening. The longer it takes to find the right person, the more those criteria, pre-agreed criteria go out the window and the more likability comes in. And at the end, you say, well, we've seen 10 people or we've seen 20 people and I like Joe the best. And that's why I'm going for Joe. No, it, it, it's sort of interesting because I think most people, when you think of hiring, think about I need to find someone who's qualified. And you're almost reversing it. You're saying, I'm establishing what qualified is. Now I'm going to disqualify the people that don't meet up. And then I'll see who's left at the end. And I think that that gives you a very different answer. Yeah. And a lot of um, situations when I start talking to business owners about what are the requirements the executive has to bring, I encounter on one side, um, Criteria like has to have a certain degree, number of years in a role, those types of things mm -hmm. that are more formal than, than actually related to qualification. And then on the other side of the spectrum, I hear a lot about, you know, has to be self-motivated, has to be an A player, uh, you know, has to be a, a, a team player. I, I have yet to find an executive profile where somebody said, you know, I suck at teams and uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm the biggest star on the planet when it comes to sales. That doesn't mean anything. So I try to really hone it in on past experiences, the things that they should bring to the table. And I also feel in the fractional world in particular, those are way more important. It's way more important to have somebody that has sold the same product before to the same decision makers, uh, close similar deals and deal structures mm -hmm. than someone who, you know, qualified for President's Club twice in his career. Because there are thousands of millions of people out there who've done President's Club if their company had a President's Club. It's like titles. There are thousands of CROs mm -hmm. out there. But the question is, have they really let a cohesive revenue effort consisting out of marketing, sales, and customer success? And then if you drill down and ask those questions, you know, in a lot of places, you come to learn that it wasn't really a revenue leadership role. It was more a sales or a sales and marketing role or a customer success role or an e-commerce leader role. Um, so it's all about these past experience and the details around it that, in my opinion, qualify someone into a fractional executive sales leadership role. Any regrets? No. B 
because (laughs) you only have regrets when you look backwards. And I try to look forward. Amen to that. So what's next for you and Vendux over the coming 12 months? Well, we uh, just added a new partner to our team uh, on Monday this week. Um, So very recently, um, and that's part of our growth strategy to bring in senior talent uh, to help us grow the business. Um, We try to be uh, mindful of complementing skill sets to what we already have, apply some of our own teachings in our own uh, uh, hiring. And so we're excited about that. That should generate a lot of growth for us this year. Um, And um, I'm at this point not certain when we'll add the next partner, but that could come as early as Q3 or Q4 if things go well with uh, this partner number two. What's the best way for people in our audience to reach out and contact you? Well, you can look me up on uh, LinkedIn. There's only one Henning Schwinum. Um, that's easy to find. Um, you can also email me at henning.schwinum at vendux.org or G. Through both channels, uh, you can get hold of me. We will put Henning's LinkedIn and email addresses in our show notes and uh, as an insert uh, into our video for those who don't quite know how to translate a German name into the English language. (laughs) Uh, But any answers to anything, but it really helps an email if you get the letters correct. Um, Henning, I want to thank you for being a guest on our Fractionals Unplugged show. Be sure to subscribe to both our podcast on all the major platforms and on our YouTube channel for our videos. Until next time. Make an impact on your clients and family on your terms, securing your independence with the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned. Mm